All right, guys, I just wanted to start off this video by saying I am so, so, so happy for Trey Mann tonight. You want to know why? He became the first rookie to hit seven consecutive threes in the first half. Right? That is just, wow. I am just so happy for him. That's, that's amazing stuff out of Trey Mann. But if this is the first time watching, guys, welcome. My name is DK. I make content for daily fantasy sports, uh, prize picks, and for NBA Top Shot. If you're looking for more in-depth content, I do offer that on Patreon.com. More info is down below. And the sponsor of this video is Prize Picks. Got my Prize Picks shirt on. Um, they are a player prop site where you can mix and match sports. Uh, how it works is you pick two to five player props, and you, you can win up to 10x your money. You got a ton of ways you can play for NBA, taking it over under fantasy points, points, rebounds, assists, assists, points, rebounds, three pointers made. You can mix and match sports too. Like I said, they have basically every sport you can think of. So if you guys want to give it a try, if you're a new user, you can sign up and use my code DKDFS for a 100% match up to $100. So that is a free $100 to play with on the site if you do use my code. But all right, guys, let's get into this video. So really quick, let's go over my lineup here from tonight. So tonight. Um, I played one of the more contrarian lineups I think I've ever went. Like, I faded almost all the chalk. Um, now, I went over, you know, we spent a lot of time on, you know, what was optimal, you know, ways to get different at Patreon. You know, we went over optimal, obviously, Tobias, Maxi, Derek White, you know, probably one more Boston guy. Lucas is spun up even though he's really bad, but he was, you know, the, the, the spun up we wanted to go with in cash games, right? But um, so... My take on the slate was with a beat and Harden out, I really like Tobias and Maxi, but I thought there's a chance they could get blown out and maybe, you know, Doc Rivers pulls the plug early since it was a back to back. So that that was my strategy. I just played like a really risky approach in large field tournaments. I basically shot for the moon. It didn't work out, but I I knew there was a really good chance it wasn't going to, right? I was I was go basically trying to go first. And if I wasn't going to get first, well, probably going to get last. So I put an extremely risky build in my lineup. So let's go over it. I did eat the Derek White chalk. Um, and we talked a, a decent amount about Peyton Pritchard as a pivot. He did really well at low ownership. Um, you know, CJ McCollum was let down. It was Jonas Valanciunas. So it was the absolute smash. So just unfortunately, I picked the wrong Pelican. Um, so a little bit tilted about that. Cade Cunningham finally bought back into him. Sure enough. How about two quick fouls, right? You, I just like, I just knew it. I, I was like, clicked on Kate Cunningham's name for the first time in like 10 slates. I'm like, he's actually going to get two quick fouls, isn't he? Because he hadn't gotten foul trouble at all, at all. Finally buy back in, right back to foul trouble and losing big minutes. Um, Chris Tops or Zingas, not super chalky. An absolute smash, 57 fancy points, five blocks. Um, just like that game's up to after tournaments, right? There's very little ownership in that game, so... Um, that was a game that I thought had a lot of upside. I went to Kevin Porter Jr. as my other contrarian play. It was Christian Wood that you really wanted. But again, I don't have any regrets. Christian Wood absolutely smashed. Um, it is what it is. I was willing to take that risk. I also rolled the dice on Nas Reed, hoping that Carl Anthony Towns would get ruled out after all the other games started. What happened was we got the cat news at seven, and of course he was in. Now, I cover this a lot. I was like, hey. If, we, if that does happen, it's a guaranteed L, basically, for me. So you can tell, right, I faded the chalk um, I faded the chalk 76ers, and I rolled the dice on Nas Reed, just a super, super contrarian lineup. Um, I went to the low on Patrick Beverly. He smashed, even though he did not shoot well. And Chris Boucher absolutely crushed at surprisingly low ownership. I was shocked that Marvin Bagley was that popular. Boucher, no one played Boucher. Um, because you know, when, when Toronto, when two of the main guys out, it's usually Boucher that gets that big minutes bump. Um, and we had seen it, you know, recently we saw it last game played almost 40 minutes. So I, I was pretty surprised how low owned he was, but he crushed again, though, uh, the 76ers kept it close. So both Tobias and Maxi, uh, did do very well as I thought I was like, if the game says competitive, those two are probably having really good games. Um, but yeah, again, I, I basically was going all out, super contrarian build, trying to go for first, didn't work out, right? 76ers game, stayed competitive, Carlton Towns ended up playing, but I have no risk, right? I wasn't playing a huge amount tonight. I was just, you know, I, I just thought there's a lot of good contrarian plays today. So, um, that was it for the luck back guys. Oh, and again, so we mentioned the Trey Mann, uh, breaking the record, seven threes in the first half. How about Darius Baisley and Alexi Pokashevsky? Eh, Pokashevsky. 
with Shea Gildas Alexander back in one of the toughest matchups? How about all three? Absolutely smashing, right? But, but, you know, right, with Shea out in a great matchup against the Magic last game, I play Baisley, Pokashevsky, and Trey Man. Five of 50 shooting. With Shea back, much tougher matchup. They all smash. Trey Man breaks a record. I, 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 you can only laugh at that, right? Like, just think of, think, let that, just think about that, right? Think about what I just said about the Thunder. And you got to think about it and just like, you can only laugh, right? It just, again, it makes you want to go crazy. But let's go over some ownership in high stakes. So um, Derek White, 70%. Again, Derek White, massive chalk. Um, you saw, again, Luca was extremely popular. He was a letdown. Um, let's see, the winning lineup had Maxi, who was chalky, Tobias as well. Um, Shake Milton was low owned. He crushed. Van Fleet, we talked about him as a good contrarian play. He went off. Again, it was JV, not CJ as the contrarian spin up that you wanted for the Pelicans, but I have no regrets playing CJ there in that spot of that ownership. Um, Rui had a good game as well, but let's see. Let's go down to the bottom, check out some ownership down here. Um, Roby got a decent chunk of ownership. He couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. If you played Roby tonight, I feel for you. Um, again, Cade was pretty popular. But uh, yeah, I think that's it for the look back, guys. So let's. Move on to this four-game slate. And so excited to talk about the Golden State Warriors. Whew, I love this rotation. I love their... Do you guys know I really like Steve Kerr? He's a, he's a great coach. But yeah, no Steph Curry. So um, Jordan Poole, 7-4, should start. The point guard position should play mid-30s minutes. Um, I think he looks pretty decent here in this spot. You know, the price point is not super cheap on him, but... He's also going to be one of their main playmakers. Should play mid thirties minutes in a good matchup. So I, I like Pool. I think Clay Thompson's a little bit pricey. Like if I had to pick between the two guards, it would be Pool. Now the positive is we did see thirty eight minutes from Clay Thompson last game, so that was good to see. But yeah, I would prefer Pool of the guards. Wiggins at seven one. I mean he's probable, so going to play and probably play low thirties minutes. He's more of a secondary option for me. Draymond Green started last game what was uh, on a limit of twenty eight minutes, but got ejected. Um, so we'll see what the limit is for Draymond here. If he plays around 30 minutes, I think he's just like, okay. Um, but I wouldn't expect huge minutes for Draymond. Otto Porter, really big game last game. He played 29 minutes. Um, I think he looks decent as well. Um, you know, if we get mid-20s, minutes met some Otto in the spot. I think he's a guy, again, can stuff the stat sheet. So I think he looks okay. Looney at 4-8, did lose some minutes last game. Only played 17. Again, we have Draymond back. You've had Bielitsa play relatively well off the bench too. 20 plus minutes from Bielitsa now in... Uh, the last four games. So I think Bielitsa is intriguing there at 3.9K price point. But again, you had Draymond get ejected. So he probably picked up a couple extra minutes. Kaminga, 4-3. Minutes wise for him, I would think it's around 20, which makes him definitely in play. We also have Gary Payton coming back, who that's going to be one more body of the rotation that like, who knows how many minutes he's going to play. If I had to guess right now, it's like maybe mid-teens. But it's just on a small slate when you have to really focus on the Golden State rotation, it's just not fun at all, right? Because... Outside of the main guys, it's like, who knows what uh, Steve Kerr is going to do. On the Orlando side, so uh, Wendell Carter Jr. is 8.4K. He's been their most consistent player so far this year. He's played extremely well, too. He had a massive game against the Thunder, one for 59 fancy points. Um, with Draymond Green back, you're probably going to get Draymond on Carter Jr., so it's not necessarily the best matchup. I would say he's more of a tournament-only play. Suggs is still out. 6.3 for 6.3K for Cole Anthony. Not a bad price point, but he has really struggled of late. Um, I think it's an interesting buy low opportunity here on Cole Anthony. Wagner, Mo Bamba, more secondary options for me in the mid-range. Uh, Okiki's 4-4. I mean, he's actually played decent minutes. Well, he played 31 minutes last game. I think he's a fair value play. Mark up Fultz, they've been pretty strict on his minutes. Like, they're keeping him at around 20, which makes it hard to feel good about him. But, like, he can still go for, like, 25 fancy points in 20 minutes. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, RJ Hampton most likely continues to start. He hasn't been super productive. I think, like, 25 to 30 minutes is a fair guess. So, sure, he's playable. Um, a guy like Terrence Ross, you know, may or may not be in the rotation. But, um, you know, he's... 
I guess, viable on a small slate for tournament shot. Um, Gary Harris most likely will be in the rotation. Um, I think he's like an interesting pivot off of RJ Hampton. Like if Hampton starts again um, and gets a good amount of ownership, then, you know, maybe you could look to Gary Harris as a pivot off of RJ Hampton. And then Mo Wagner uh, most likely plays that backup five role, and he played pretty well. Um, now there has been there has been some blowouts, but um, if we get like around twenty minutes from Wagner, I think he's definitely a viable GPP play because again, when the Mets are there for him, he's most likely going to produce. Atlanta and New York, so Trey Young ten point four K, tough tough matchup, but um, he's probably going to want to put out a, a big performance against the Knicks, who um, obviously in that playoff series, he's probably going to get a lot of booze uh, tomorrow. But you know, no John Collins, um, the ceiling is high in Trey Young. Uh, Clint Capella at 6'4", probably your safest bet on the Hawks. Should play around 30 minutes. Probably not going to kill you. Does have an upside, too. You know, he can block some shots, get some rebounds. You know, no Collins, but Donovich also questionable, which is pretty big news. So, but Donovich has been pretty consistent for them off the bench. If he can't go, I think you get solidified minutes for the likes of like Herter, Gallinari, Hunter. And you probably get some more run for DeLon Wright, but he's not super cheap. So I would say like, these wings would look better if Bogdanovich is out. If Bogdanovich is in, that none of those wings really stand out. Okongu will play the back of five at 4.2K, probably play close to 20 minutes. He's a fair value play. Um, but yeah, that's it for the Hawks on the Knicks side. So what you know is the minutes are getting pretty secure for the main guys. Randall and Barrett right now both should play close to 40 minutes. Randall's not shot well last couple games, 6 of 22 and 6 of 21. But this is a really, really good match appearance in Atlanta. And then RJ Barrett um, should play like 40 minutes. He's played over 40 now last five games. Um, and he's doing a lot for the team. So the main guys for the Knicks, I think, look pretty good. Alec Burks at 5'6", we should see somewhere around low 30s minutes, which just makes him like an okay option in the mid-range. Probably going to get you like mid-20s fancy points. Fournier at 5'4", also should see around 30 minutes. He's a little bit riskier, a little more score independent, but does have a ceiling. You know, every once in a while, you'll get that Evan Fournier game, which, which I say, right? No one enjoys it. Even if you play Evan Fournier, he goes off. You don't enjoy it, right? No one, absolutely no one likes the Evan Fournier game, even if you play him. Like, if I play Evan Fournier, goes for 40 tomorrow, I won't be happy. Again, no one likes the Evan Fournier game. No one. Uh, Mitchell Robinson at 5'4". If he can stay out of foul trouble, probably sees close to 30 minutes. We know the ceiling's there in him, but he's also always in foul trouble. So he's, you know, high-risk, high-reward play. I do think quickly looks okay at 5'1", coming off the bench. Been seen consistently like mid-20s minutes. Has been pretty productive when he's on the court. So I think quickly looks decent off the bench there, but that's probably it. I don't know if we get to anyone else on this team. So moving on to Chicago and Milwaukee. Um, we got news that Caruso uh, was going to uh, or pick up the start today, and he's going to continue to start in the future. So um, at 4.1K, Alex Caruso, I think makes her a pretty safe value play. Not a guy that has a super high ceiling, but if he plays over 30 minutes, I do think he stands out with a pretty good value play. The main guys here for the Bulls are DeRozan, Vucevic, and Levine. All look pretty good here. Um, you know, of the three, I think Levine probably the easiest to get to since he's the cheapest. Uh, but all three have a ceiling, and the price points have dropped on these guys. So, um, yeah, the main Bulls I think all look look okay. The only issue I have with them is like trying to figure out who's going to have the really big game on a night tonight basis is kind of tricky. But I will say... If this game stays competitive, I think at least one of those guys is a really good game. So the main studs, I think, look pretty good. Io moved to the bench, saw his minutes go down a little bit, played 24. So, you know, a little bit hard to get to him. I would rather go to Crusoe, but also you're probably going to Crusoe at way more ownership. So if it comes down to a point tomorrow where you have, like, a really chalky lineup, then maybe you could pay a few extra, um, a little more for Io to get contrarian um, over a... Probably somewhat chalky Caruso. So that could be a decision that you, you can make depending on how the rest of your lineup looks. Kobe White's minutes went way down. They played 13, so pretty hard to go there. Uh, Patrick Williams, they limited his minutes in his first game, played 19 minutes. So as it stands right now, probably can't go there. And I don't think I can get to anyone else. I mean, Thompson at 3-3, he's going to play the backup five role. On a small slate, I guess it's okay. And like, may, if like something happens to Vucevic foul trouble or something, you could see you know Thompson get extended. So like it's fine. But more often than not, he's probably going to play around 15 minutes. On the Milwaukee side, so the big news is Chris Middleton's out for this game. Giannis is probable. So great matchup here. Now a high usage player out of the lineup. I think Giannis under the combo really stands out at the top. Um, you know, going to play big, big minutes. And again, if no Middleton should be more used to go around. I do, I do think Drew Holiday looks better as well at 7.8K. 
He's probably playing mid 30 minutes. He should play, you know, second fiddle to Giannis, but still have, you know, relatively high usage. As far as the bigs go, Bobby Portis, revenge game narrative at 6.6. 25 to 30 minutes, I think, is a fair guess. More of a tournament player with Brooke Lopez back. Because Lopez being back does, you know, make Lopez's minutes a little bit riskier. Lopez himself, um, you know, 15 to 20 minutes, I think, is a fair guess. So, again, secondary value play. Grayson Allen's 4-3. Uh, the minutes have been trending down on him a little bit. But I think, you know, low to mid-20s minutes is a fair guess for him, which makes him viable for tournaments, again, though he is scoring dependent. The question is, who picks up a start for Middleton? I think it could be a couple. They could go a couple different ways. They can go to Pat Connaughton. They could go to Wes Matthews. Maybe they could go to Jordan Nawara. So we'll keep an eye on that. Whoever starts probably feel the best about, unless it's Wes Matthews. Like, if Wes Matthews starts, I'm not going to be super excited about it. If a guy like Pat Connaughton starts, I think you're going to feel pretty good about his minutes. Or if Jordan Nawara starts, right, I would, I would think they get at least 20. So keep an eye on that starting lineup there for Milwaukee. I think it's going to be pretty important. Um, I think that's going to wrap it up for the Bucks, Clippers, and the Denver Nuggets. I mean, this team. Well, both teams last game actually benched their starters. At halftime, just wave the white flag. Call it a day. So with the Clippers, you got to know no one's minutes are secure. It's just, it's hard to feel confident about anyone. But I will say, you know, Reggie Jackson of the Clippers starters is the guy that has the highest ceiling. So if you're playing for a competitive game, I think you can look to Reggie Jackson, a solid tournament play. Avicii Zubac, if he stays out of foul trouble, he's probably playing over 30 minutes. The issue is he's going up against Nikola Jokic. There's a decent chance he gets into foul trouble. The mid-range, you know, guys like Morris and Mann, these guys have a ceiling. But again, minutes kind of all over the place. Hardenstein, he's the backup center. If you think Zubac gets into some foul trouble, you can roll the dice into Hardenstein. Uh, this grouping of like Covington, Kennard, Batum, Coffey, probably one of those guys is a good game. But they will go with the hot hand. So like Clippers are always a team you're going to, it's hard to break down when they're, you know, have a good amount of their players available just because minutes are all over the place. They're going to go the hot hand a lot. So I will say in a competitive game, I would think you probably get over 30 minutes from Reggie Morris and Zubach and probably man as well. But you just, you never know with this team. So proceed with caution on the Clippers. And finally, the Denver Nuggets who, again, Finally buying Nikola Jokic, 8 of 23 shooting, and benched when I play him. Unbelievable stuff, but I love the matchup for him. So, assuming the game can stay competitive, I think Jokic looks really good. Interesting that Bones Highland is actually the next priciest player on Denver. Um, I know he's played well off the bench, but um, don't know if I can go to him at that price point. I would rather look to the mid-range guys like Barton, Gordon, and Morris. I think all three look decent here in a good matchup. I think Morris would probably be my favorite of the bunch. Should see close to 30 minutes, but yeah, the Denver secondary plays all look okay here. Um, Boogie Cousins, revenge game uh, for him. You know, he's going to play the backup five, probably play around 15 minutes, could play more if the game blows out. So he's always an intriguing play for GPPs. And that's probably it. Again, Bones has been playing well, but 5.3K feels a little bit too pricey. So yeah, guys, that's going to wrap it up for the video today. If you have been, uh, you know, liking the YouTube content, just make sure to leave a like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell. All those things do help me out, guys. And, and again, I really appreciate all you guys checking the videos out every single day. Cannot do this without all your support. So thanks again, guys. Have a great night, and I will see everyone in the next video.